klickade det klickade det klickade det klick klickade det klickade det klickade det klick klickade det klickade det klickade det klick 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 is that your dolphin song that's that's actually the black and white minstrels but for dolphins so Ooh. that was Ooh. any dolphin <sighs> listeners that's going to be incredibly racist for them that's black and white minstrels for dolphins is where they actually dress up as porpoises <laughs> pork pie. pie. <laughs> did you excuse pork me? Pasta. Did you say pork pie? No, pork pie. Oh, I do apologize. No, no, no. Pork pie. <laughs> as a as a Jewish dolphin, I was almost offended there. <laughs> <laughs> I can go about your day. But if you're only being if you're only being racist against those bottlenose twats, <laughs> then I'm perfectly okay with it. Uh, don't get me started on those bloody orcas. Well, coming over here. <laughs> Coming over, taking all our jobs at Sea World. <laughs> taking our fish. Ooh. Anyway, it it's not been that long for once. It's been no moderately quick. Yeah, <laughs> we've done all right with it. This A rarity time. for us that within within the same thirty day period <laughs> that we've <laughs> managed to uh, coalesce our timelines mm. and and record some nonsense. To spill out into your ears. Thank you for joining us. Over the point at which this goes up, yeah, freezing. Are we going to leave that to you this time? Are you? You're the one with many hours on your hands. I, I, I have many hours right now. However, soon I hearken back to the world of work. Oh. I can see what I can up knock. Groovy. How are you enjoying the the not being at work? It's as ever. It is absolutely. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait. 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 Glorious. No, I won't give in. I won't give in till I'm victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. Going to say, do you need a sequin jacket yeah, for that? That's where, that's where we'll put the intro. Boom, right there. Intro music. Ah, uh, did you see? Worked in seamless. Yeah. Seamless. Yeah, it's been really good because I've not been at work. Uh, mm. I've been doing some of the video games, as is per. Oh, what kind of, uh, what manner of video games have been uh, been entertaining yourself? Well, with? I told you about this the other day, but I shall now hearken upon it. For all the lovely listeners out there. <laughs> Harkin upon. So, as I'm sure everyone is aware, so, for us right now, E3 is happening. When you are listening to this, E3 happened. E3 is going on. <laughs> E3 happened when you, dear listener, are listening to this. Are you sure it's going on? Is it still going on now? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up some dates. Can, you can it may have already it. finished, but obviously part of E3 is that the companies will do just these weird little giveaways. And I had previously had... It's it's still going on. It's still happening. Right. I already had in my Ubi Play oh, no. library... No, come on, oh, it's fine. No. It's just one more launcher on my already crowded desktop. Mm. Here, have, here, have an Epic launcher. Here, have a GOG launcher. Here, have an Origin launcher. Here, have a Steam launcher. Ugh. Go on, so what's... What's Ubi holding ransom? There had been a previous giveaway of noted winter sport game Steep. Oh. Which I had, and I had <laughs> absolutely no intention of ever playing ever, because why would I? It's in my library of oh, yeah. hundreds of games that I've downloaded for free. It was it was free. Why it's not? there. It was going to fester forever and never get played. Mm. But okay. then, oh, E3 happened, and they were like, hey, we're also now going to give away the free DLC of a Japan map. So you can play on Mount Fuji Ooh. too. And I was like, well, oh, okay. I'm sure that'll be around for a long time. Let's just check on the... Oh, no, as soon as E3 ends, the deal ends. The only Ooh. way to access it is if you've downloaded yeah. Steep. So... Right, which requires you to download UbiPlay first. Or is it... You... Sorry, yeah, Uplay. I already had that downloaded anyway because yeah. I had Watch Dogs downloaded. Mm. So I... I looked at it, and it's like, 30 gigabyte download. Because the only way you're getting this free DLC Ooh. is with this, it's through the store. The game installed. Okay, go on then. 
about an hour and a half later, which I don't know. <laughs> I mean, people. I've never had a problem with Virgin Internet. I, I may have issues with. It's yeah, fine. I may have issues with the download speed occasionally, but it does the job. It's never crapped out on me. Me. Mm-hmm. Downloaded it, went into it, got my free DLC. But first, before you can go into any of the sub menus, you have to do the intro. You have to learn the tr- tutorial. Yeah, you've bit. got to learn yeah. to play the game. I was like, okay, fine, let's go yeah. through this in the bloody rigmarole. And as soon as it started loading up, I was like, oh, oh. On this, oh. even on my, I think it's a five year old gaming PC, this looks. This looks very pretty, does it? Oh, that! Oh, look oh. at these textures. Oh, okay. Let's give this a little bit. Oh, look at the way the snow moves. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> that's a lovely jacket. Look at the jacket physics. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, right. Let's not. It's bound to be a terrible game. It's not just pretty. This. It's. It's funny. There's another kind of game where you have to look out for the jacket physics as well. Ah, Dead or Alive <laughs> Beach Volleyball. Beach volleyball has mm. has the jacket physics. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of anime games that have uh, jacket <laughs> physics mm. in them. Ah, one Chanbara. Anyway, Sorry, yes. I, I got uh, by right. It. Well, I'm sure this will probably be some awful dog shit game. But you know, I've got to do this to get the free DLC, which I'll never play. So let's right. We'll ignore the pretty and we'll play. And I started playing. I was like, oh, hello, remarkably intuitive gameplay. <laughs> My, how nice it oh. is to meet you again. Oh. Uh, so yeah, now I'm playing steep. Uh... <laughs> so you you've been sucking into a skiing game, is what you're telling me? Because of free, yeah, content. you don't just ski. You can also snowboard, oh. and you can wingsuit, oh, right. and you can rocket Ooh. wingsuit, which I've not tried yet. But damn, that sounds interesting. And that does sound a bit paraglide. A bit interesting. And there's also sleds. I've not unlocked the sled yet, but I can't wait to unlock the sled. Because, <laughs> oh man, the, the crashing and the KOs, oh, they're all so good. So yeah, I uh, I just won more game I've got downloaded that I need to play that I'm enjoying again. It's horrible. How is, <laughs> how is the uh, lovely free content? Uh, I've not gotten to the free content yet. I'm still just dicking about on Mont Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> ah, opening world map. Tra la 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 la. Well, uh- I'm impressed that it managed to sucker you in with pretty visuals and yeah, intuitive I, gameplay. I can just imagine yeah. if I actually got around to getting a decent PC. It, I just I imagine how good it'd look. Oh, it'd be absolutely brilliant. That's just one more, one more in the huge back catalogue. Uh, At least you've started, though. At least you've got got cracking on it. I've yeah. done what those developers intended. I've played the game and been impressed by it. Point yeah. like base level. I've really? done what needed to be done. Oh, speaking yeah. of like the, uh, you've engaged with the product exactly. Industry, I'm yeah. never ever going to spend anything on it. <laughs> I will. I don't buy DLC. It's you say that now, but you were you were suck it into it so well, hard, like a like I don't know, like you were taken in by a Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> Not just any Dyson, a V8 mind. The V8, yeah, the V8 powerful cordless. suction. But yeah, speaking of like the. The controls, like I said, they're very intuitive because you're not. Whereas, like you mentioned, SSX, and you know, if you look at that, and obviously, yes. you know, like the uh, Tony Hawk's. Are you using like a game controller or are you using an Xbox okay. One pad? Right. Obviously, not a okay. proper. Well, I think it's official. It's a Microsoft one. It's made for use on PCs and Xbox One. Um, oh. but. Like with a an SSX or a Tony Hawk's, obviously your your trick buttons were your face buttons. They were the triangle, square, the X, whatever. No, stop it. <laughs> no, stop hitting your face. <laughs> face button. Face button push. <laughs> Whereas I, I believe Steep is more akin to the Skate series, where it's the analog sticks that control your movement entirely. So your tricks are all done okay. through the analog sticks. And your movement, you know, if you want to do a steep, uh, a steep, if you want to do a sharp turn, I was just so obsessed. Oh my god! After this podcast, I'm playing steep again. Name drop. You want to do a sharp turn? Both analog sticks go in the same direction. It'll boom. It'll flip you, and that's you. Whoa! Sharp turn. Right. And it, it, but it also made me think. 
about before on one of the podcasts you mentioned that you were heavy into fps's now obviously yeah. you play pc fps so it may not be as applicable to you but it got me thinking because to go faster obviously you push forward yeah. and to slow down you go back yeah and it made me think that in terms of that kind of game that was very intuitive to me going forward makes you go forward going back makes you go back but mm. if i was playing an fps using a controller some people prefer it where you push forward head goes down push backward head goes up because that's as if you're controlling the character from behind so inverting ah, right, invert yeah. the y axis i cannot do that i cannot play with an inverted y axis i have to play it so if i push the analog controller up head goes up push analog controller down head goes down do you uh, d- can you can, can you invert the y axis I'm, I'm trying to figure out how i like to play it with a, a gamepad yeah. now um so move forward and then i'd have that so obviously when you when uh, you'd be I'd pushing the right analog it. stick to move the head around how would you yeah i'd I'd have it the opposite to you. So you would have it as, essentially as if... Pull, if you pull down, your camera goes up. So you have it as if you are controlling the actual head. So if you've got your thumb on the back of the the actual yeah. head, <laughs> yeah, that's the, way, that's much, the yeah. inverted one. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what it is, but I've never I, been comfortable with it. I think that you've... I think that the the way that I, I would play it is the default setup. Yeah. I think you're playing it with an inverted uh, camera setup. I don't know why that's the standard, though. That... I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Mm. I think it does. What I've always, you know, how um, basically you've got two analog sticks. What I on most yeah. controllers. What I would like to do is play some video game instead of using uh, like a game controller. I want to have two like joysticks. You know, like flight sticks yeah. as my as my as my left and right analog sticks. So you control like the person walking forward by pushing the fo- left one because they've got like all manner of triggers and buttons on them as well. So you could have all your other shoulder buttons and things mapped to these two different controllers. And then have one to do the camera, and then the other one to, because then it would feel like, uh, not that you were controlling a person, but like you remember in Men in Black One, where the the eight tiny there's a tiny alien inside the head yeah. of the guy, you feel like yeah. that. you're controlling a character because based on like you're sitting inside their skull and then like moving them around, or like I think it would probably work well if you were playing like a Titanfall. Yeah, I was going to say that is that would be mech. the ideal mech game. Because because there was oh. there was there was a, a game on the uh, Xbox and the 360, some mech combat yeah. game, which came with a massive control yeah. deck, which is basically was that it, with it built uh, in. Was it Mech Assault? I feel like it was Mech Assault. Man. I think it was Mech Assault. Yeah, because they made they made one for the 360 way. Uh, they replaced the gigantic, ridiculous controller with Kinect controls. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So instead of having this this really chunky like fit, tactile buttons everywhere like uh, control deck. You just had to wave your hat, arms around in the air like you just didn't care mm. to control your imaginary mech. So yeah, uh, yeah, I would I play opposite to you, but then uh, the keyboard mouse is superior. So well, well, yes. Mm. 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 It would also be really good if, uh, like, they do an alien isolation game where if you got to be Sigourney oh. Weaver and <laughs> aliens at the end. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> With a big robo lifter. Oh, that would be, good. That would be good, good, good. I'd like that. And you just have a microphone where you can scream, Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm, that ideal gaming mm. experience. Such 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 immersion. Mm. How about if you played your uh, your steep game instead of using analog sticks to go left and right, uh, played it with a dance mat? Oh. Would, would that get you on board? Would you be down with that? Uh, why not just use a Guitar Hero controller? <laughs> Just you know, yeah. Uh, why not? Be like one why of those not? hardcore guys. It's like Dark Souls three with yeah. the Guitar Hero controller. Absolutely mm. <laughs> easy. No, no problem. Yeah. Well, the rest of us just sit there and go, "Well, fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it with the controls. It was designed. I nearly for. made it past the asylum demon once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw the upside world. Speaking of uh, the 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 etoise, the the the. E, uh, e, e, uh, uh, e uh, Is uh-huh. there anything that you can say that you, let's say, were particularly impressed by, uh, or surprised by? Well, there's a surprised by not so much. I mean, I I was a little surprised by how much everybody lost their shit about Keanu Reeves <laughs> being 
in three seconds of a game trailer, not even in gameplay, just like, oh, look, there's his image in this thing. Oh, my oh. God! And then a meme was spawned. You're breathtaking. <laughs> it is quite breathtaking. But that's modern graphical technology mm. for you. Uh, yeah, I was more interested... Like, I was already interested in the sequel to Doom and Wolfenstein because FPS gaming is mm. my bag. So when I saw the trailers, I was like, yeah, they look like what I wanted them to look like. Great. I wasn't aware that Nintendo were working on a sequel to Breath of the Wild, so when they told me that, I was pretty super happy. Is it... Um, because uh, because I've not... This is an E3, I've not followed particularly closely. Is it sort of a true sequel? Because obviously there's no... No Zelda game really has a sequel. So is this a... Uh, it's... Let me, let me have a quick read of the thing. Mm-hmm. Or is it just more expanding, like, hey, this worked really well. It's going to be a completely sort of different game, but it's going to hold these same principles. Yeah. Previously up till now, it had been... It's like the James Bond of, of video game characters. It's not necessarily the same character, mm-hmm. but it's the same storyline. It's the same, like, secret code. Yeah. Uh, this one, I think they're uh, pitching as a direct sequel, so it will be the same characters and the same kind of... Uh, mm-hmm world visually it's the, it's the very much the same art style which uh, they've done before where they've had different character storylines but the same kind of art style where they did it with um uh ocarina of time and majora's mask mm. uh, but that was again supposedly a direct sequel or so we were led mm. to believe uh, but yes um when i heard that there was going to be more breath of the wild type gameplay i thought well time to get a switch again thunderous orgasms Thunderous, yeah. There was a there was a crack of thunder as it escaped <laughs> through my through my blend, yeah. <laughs> blend, mm. my blend. Mm. My ejaculate broke the sound barrier. <laughs> oh! Just as it came out, it formed the shape of Zelda. You you could but touch its silken hair, and then it yeah. left you forever. It did when it splattered on the mirror. Anyway. <laughs> um. Other than that, anything <laughs> else? Uh, uh, let me see what else. Among all the nerds, of course, the uh, remake of Final Fantasy VII mm. uh, sent everybody squeeing to the comments. Having never played a single Final Fantasy oh. game, I am left unmoved. Oh. How do you feel about that? I Well, I knew the Final Fantasy VII thing was happening anyway, and yeah, okay, I don't like the fact that it still seems to be in installments. What I was surprised by... Wait, they're doing an episodic release yeah. on it? Oh. What I was surprised oh. and happy about Bad is news. the polish, the spit polish that they're going to put on Final Fantasy VIII and redistribute. That's also coming, yeah. Because yeah. I liked Final Fantasy VIII. Not, it seems to be one of those that has grown on people as it's gone on. And I quite liked mm. it. I still, I've got it on Steam and I've yet to revisit it. But I was very happy about that because that is a very underappreciated game because Final Fantasy IX got a little spit polish and Final Fantasy... Six has been re-released umpteen times, and obviously Final Fantasy yeah. Seven. This was happening with <clears throat> Final Fantasy Ten has had two re-releases. They, yeah, they did a HD one as well. Good Whereas Final Fantasy Eight just felt like this little bastard stepchild. It never got anything. Three and four both got released on the DS. One and two mm-hmm. got GBA ports, and uh, so, yeah. you know they were released on smartphones as well. And Final Fantasy Eight just felt off on its own. And I just felt very sorry for it. It's like a little neglected child. But now, Aww. now it has a chance to be revisited by perhaps a generation that will appreciate it more. So does this mean that you're interested in maybe getting a PS4? Uh, well, it's I think it's in the Switch the predominant one for Final Fantasy VIII. Um, the Switch oh. has been what I've been... Hmm, the Switch is the one that I'm probably most tempted to get just because of the quality of games that are on there. There is pretty much... There are some... Muy bien. Yeah. Muy bien. There is nothing really. The only thing that attracts me to an uh, an X Bone or a <laughs> Puss Four is their yeah. ability to play Blu-rays. The, the, but well, the actual PS3 can do yeah, that. Yeah, the actual game content on both of them. Meh. I, there's nothing really. I mean, I thought Final Fantasy VII Remake would be a game changer, but meh. meh. Yeah, I think so, it doesn't help that the the missus is currently nagging about getting a switch as well, and they're just like, "Hmm, please remember, we bought a Wii not long after launch day as well." So, uh, da, 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 da. 
and you didn't really use it a lot, and it was me ended up getting things like Zack and Wiki and the cute little like Little King story and all the niche little games. I was one keeping it good. Well, uh, there's plenty. There's plenty to keep uh, keep you both entertained on yeah. the Switch. If she if she does give up on it, then at least you've got a nice nice yeah. present for yourself. Uh, so yeah. all I'm saying is expect a visit to say, hey, discount. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you're going to buy me a Switch, and I'm going to give you that money. Well, all right. Because let's face it, it is not discounted anywhere. I hate Nintendo consoles so so bad. So there's that. E3, that's yeah. right. Uh, there were some other little pieces as well. There was uh, a Star Wars thing yeah. that uh, it just looks like they're doing. They're just putting the name on a game so that they can keep the yeah. name. Uh, I'm in no way interested in it. Oof. It just looks generic, mm. which is a weird thing to say about a Star Wars game because it's meant to be, hey, welcome to this amazing universe of uh, that you really want to go and visit but it just looks yeah. not too great and that one you can say something about because they actually released some gameplay as well as just a trailer mm. uh, but the other one that uh, was also trailerized but uh, might be quite interesting is Elden Ring mm. have you seen this one? no this is the one that's uh, directed by the guy who directed the Dark Souls games and co-written by George R. R. Martin <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, it's I've like, heard. It's like they've read uh, as much Tolkien as they could get their hands on and had a, a happy little sex <laughs> dream about it. And together they've, like, bukkake this game out. Hey, hey, you there, Fukazaki, whatever your name is. Let's make a game. Yep, Martin and Miyazaki. Mm. War, woof. Oof. So, yeah, it has the kind of style, visual style, quite a lot of, of some of the Souls games, at least from mm. the trailer. Uh, and I think we can probably expect a similar kind of gameplay, but the storyline's going to be written by Martin, George R. R. Martin. So, rather than having to like discover the story of the place that you're in, there's actually going to be a plot. <laughs> <laughs> An wow. overly... Potentially. Potentially, yeah. One that takes 17 years yeah. to be real, yeah. <laughs> but potentially there's a plot in this and one. And there's way too much focus on describing every little thing, but... Hey, it'll mm-hmm. be there. I think really a George R. R. Martin game is better as a text adventure game. That would be his. <laughs> that would and should be his. That's his ideal. Yeah. You pick up a brooch. It is engraved with fine engraving. It is in Elvish. Do you choose to decipher this? Yes or no? Yes. You don't know Elvish. You die. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> a wog has sex with your corpse. Ugh. Why not? I don't, Why not? Uh, I don't know if it was part of E3, but have you seen anything about the Google Stadia? Stadia? Stadia, Stadia yeah. They announced some details about that uh, like a week yeah, before. It, it was very reminiscent. I think it's yeah. a very good idea, but it reminded me of... what Was it OnLive? Oh, yeah. they OnLive tried to yeah, do it as well. It yeah. reminded me of that, but with actual sort of purchasing power behind it. Like they they've mm. got the ability to kind of make it happen because they can throw money at it and not worry about it being a loss leader. Yeah, they've also actually got the infrastructure already built because they've already got servers literally all over the world. Yeah, but it did one part of it which I wasn't sort of sure on. So it essentially is all down to the servers and your internet connection. Your yes, your computer essentially doesn't come into any part of it. No. No, it, it, all the computing is done by them remotely. And so it just makes me wonder, it, it's amazing technology that allows you to essentially bypass all your computer's graphics to be able to display it in the best possible graphics. Yes. It it, yep. mel- it melts my mind that it, it can just go, no, ignore your graphics card. I know it is terrible. Be gone, tiny graphics card. Be, come it- to me, sexy 100 gigabyte internet connection. Yeah, as long as you've got the internet connection to handle it, you can have the highest definition and graphics that you want on any device is the mm. idea. They It will run on a Chromecast mm. or on your phone. It doesn't need a, a computer, dedicated computer to do it. It's like having uh, your computer just in another building <laughs> and then a really long, long cable to your monitor with a keyboard and mouse attached. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very good and interesting concept. Mm. Their pricing model is a little bit vague at the moment because it's not clear. Because uh, there are certain tiers of um, 
quality that you can pay yeah. for if you want like the base tier which is at like 720p or if you want the 4k version you have to pay extra yeah. for that and then you have to pay as well for the game mm. that you're streaming so the idea is that then you will still own the game but you don't you can only access it through stadia yeah. um so you have to keep on paying a, a subscription to access the game that you've paid for so yeah there's some things to be worked out i really like the idea of being able to game on basically anything with a screen as long as they can work out the latency issues and latency yeah, problems. Yeah, because I think that was one of the big downfalls of OnLive was a lot of lag between input mm -hmm. and action. Well, among Which many is, other things that went wrong with OnLive. Among many other things, yeah. I think that's fine for like casual gaming. Mm. If you want to play a little bit of, I don't know, something casual. Uh, but if you want to do anything which require has time sensitive mm. inputs if you want to play a high paced game like uh a, if, even rocket league yeah because you want your actions to happen quickly on mm. screen uh, if you want to play like platforming high fast paced platforming games something like uh super meat mm. boy where things timing is everything and anything competitive any kind of fifa be... madden anything like that it needs to be you push that button yeah. it reacts instantly yeah but yeah, that was uh, that was very much interesting. Latency is the big question. But yes, I, I'm very interested in it. Have you seen uh, what Microsoft and Xbox are doing with their... It's not similar, but their new service that they're launching for PC? Uh, no, do tell for myself and all the people out there. If you already have an Xbox One console, then there's a thing called the Xbox Game Pass, where you pay a subscription monthly to have access to a library of games, which you can then download and keep, and then just play them at your mm. leisure. And they're bringing this to PC, including a load of Xbox titles. Mm. So you'll finally be able to play Xbox exclusive games on your PC. You pay something like 12, 15 pounds a month for it. And then when a new title is available on there, you can download it to keep and play whenever you mm. like. It being Microsoft though, you'll probably have to download it through the Microsoft store or it, like a dedicated PC Xbox app. Yeah. Uh, so there's another game launcher for you to have on your desktop. Yay! To crowd that out with. And yeah. best of all, you get to so download it from the Windows Store. The really user yes, intuitive. Indeed. Yeah, it's brilliant. And lovely. Yeah. <laughs> lovely. Yeah. So user friendly. But just another way to. I don't know. I've seen uh, articles in the past about how we're moving away from owning things and moving into like a, a like everything is rented, mm. like your accommodation, your entertainment, soon your clothing. Yeah. <laughs> Your food, goodness me. <laughs> give us the food back. When, I, once you've eaten it and digested it, you have to give it, send back the remains, and then that gets turned back into food for the next, the person who's on a lower pay tier. Yeah, got to figure this <laughs> out somehow. Recycled food. Yeah. yeah. If you get on the highest pay tier, then you get your gourmet prepared food. If you're on the third pay tier, it's been recycled by two people already. <laughs> Ew. Ugh. Uh, uh. So, yeah, companies making, trying to make good use of decent internet connections to allow people to enjoy gaming more often mm. in a more widespread yeah. way. I quite like it. It's good. It obviously has its positives and negatives, but I, if you know, you're paying a fair old amount for a really good internet connection, you might not necessarily have the expendable income for regularly getting brand new games. So if... That's a if fair anywhere point. were to just say, well, you know what, you're paying your your rental for the line to us. Here, you know, you get these games cheaper because the the original idea behind downloadable games was that they would cut out the middleman because all the cost essentially comes from the printing and packaging around the game that gets sent out to stores. Right. Yeah. That got kind of bastardized along the way, where the downloadable game was the RRP of a normal packaged game, which would inevitably be cheaper in any physical shop because they don't want to put it at £60. They always want to put it at less, so they'll have more likely to get the sale. Because they'll get the sale. Whereas yeah. the, DL, the downloadable copy was £60 all the time. And, and it, it doesn't drop in price because... Yeah, no wear and tear yeah, on that. Exactly. And PlayStation certainly were the ones who were worst for that. They would just keep unreasonable prices for the longest time. But I did always think 
the, the on live model was actually a very good model because it also gave you the ability to I think it was like what 30 minutes you could go into a game or something you had sort of a, oh like a free yeah, trial yeah you, you had a set amount of time yeah. and you could go in and you could play it and you go do you know what I like this I'll carry on playing I'll choose the option to unlock this game I will buy this game oh you go do you know what I'll play this 30 minutes I'm not feeling it I won't bother and if they can get that similar kind of model, it is, it is the, it has the potential to be a lot better for the user. And if they also introduce, you know, say, like Steam's got the two week refund policy, which gives you that even extra kind of safety net, where you go, well, do you know what? Actually, I've spent more time with it. I'm not enjoying this. Maybe not two weeks. I think it's been reduced to like it's it's not a lot less than you think it is. I think that was a weird sentence. Yeah. But, you know, as long as they can create some kind of refund policy like that, it is potentially something very good for the the video game wanting public who don't have masses of storage space around and also maybe don't have massive, uh, masses of storage space on their hard drive or maybe don't even have a gaming PC. Mm. And all of a yeah. sudden, it's a whole new world a new fantastic point fantastic of view. Fantastic point of view. <laughs> no one to tell them no, or where to go, or say on the idea dream. of the uh, <laughs> on the idea of the trial of the game, because they Google and they own most of the internet. There is a thought. I heard a. Okay, I don't know if this is part of the announcement or not. I can't remember if I just heard it as kind of a potential idea. But mm. here is the here's the thing. Imagine a game streamer is playing this game and streaming it to YouTube. Mm. You can uh, log on to their stream, mm. watch them playing the game for a bit. If you decide you like it, just buy it straight away f- through YouTube and start playing it on your phone or your TV or however you're watching the, the YouTube stream. Just having that kind of interconnectivity. That's something Steam doesn't mm. have, is a way to watch other people play games because that's the biggest way that, of word of mouth that it gets out and about is through Twitch mm. and YouTube streaming and all this game streaming uh, content. So if YouTube, if Google can tap into that with YouTube, mm. then they're going to drive sales straight to their gaming uh, platform. Mm. They're probably onto a winner there, I think. Do you remember when we weren't a gaming channel? That was weird. <laughs> Seems like all we've talked about is video games the past three or so. Do you remember when we were a politics channel? My God. Yeah. W- <laughs> that was <Yeah>. weird. <laughs> when I listen to the old podcast back, when I republish them, I'm just like, Wow. Oh, we we had such grand ideas. <laughs> we've come so yeah. far. Like we've moved on yeah. so far. We gave up on all that politics shit because politics gave up on us. So, because mm. uh, uh. we yeah, well, it was depressing as well. Still is. So we thought we'd go to happier things. Oh, yeah, lovely, lovely things. Anything else video game related? Oh, actually, I was going to say, have you? Ooh. I'm the two other things I'm really interested in is they released the full lineup for the the mini mega drive which is all proper and official and actually being developed by competent people oh really okay and it's got like 40 games on and most of them appear to be really good decent games so Ooh. when that gets discounted I'll probably look into getting that and they're also they've announced uh, the is it turbo graphics mini or the mini PC engine. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm amazing. hoping to God it's not just going to be like Japan and US exclusive. Because I've I've decided now I'm just going to be a mini gamer. <laughs> just It's all just going to be on <laughs> miniature consoles. That's it now. Have you got any of them? Have you got any of the... You've got the NES one? I've, or I've the, only got the, the SNES. I've been... Yeah. The mini PlayStation is being discounted everywhere. And... It's like 25 quid in a lot of places. So if I actually see it and I'm able to buy it, I will probably get the mini PlayStation, even though the games on it aren't great. But for £25, it's apparently pretty easily hackable. So just. Yeah, I've heard. I've so heard maybe just get a, a little. Give myself a little a back door, if you know what I mean. But yeah, I've. Like, I never had a, a PC Engine, a Turbo Graphics, or whatever it was called over here, because it went by several different names but i know it had a lot of quality games on it so that was really interesting and i i had a mega drive when i was a kid so seeing that and the 
it's being dealt with by credible, like, ROM creators. Oh, well, can you create a ROM? Mm. But it's essentially people who know what they're doing and not just people who Sega quickly licensed it out to because they thought they might make some money. Well, that makes... I was going to say, that makes a change. Uh, the other ones that they brought out have yeah. just been universally awful. This one's coming out. Mm, I'm going to keep my other beady little peepers on both of those. Ooh. Well, well. Um, tiny gaming, mm, huh? Teeny tiny gaming. Less storage space. Stack them on top of each other. <laughs> Create a horrible transformer. Mm. Ooh, yeah. But yeah, those were, those were my kind of big takeaways. Oh, that and Bethesda is just uh, stupid. Why are Bethesda stupid? They just don't seem to... I mean, they are, but... They're just... Well, it's Todd Howard mainly, isn't it? Because it, didn't he come on and say, like, oh, uh, I don't think people realise what we really expected of Fallout 76, that it wasn't just going to be a coming-out-of-the-gate, ready-to-play kind of experience. It was uh, one that you had to stick with and work yeah. with. Try to defend it in some way. Yeah, yeah, and you just kind of felt like saying, well, we, we did know it wasn't going to be good out of the gate because you're Bethesda. <laughs> That's not how your <laughs> games ship. Everyone... Everyone for the first six months is your new beta tester. <coughs> so, mm. Mm, I, how Bethesda has such goodwill anymore is is getting tenuous. <laughs> because uh, I think they're relying on a lot of the Skyrim goodwill right now. It's because they keep porting Skyrim to everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's now available to play on your toaster. Or yeah. Your... The TI eighty six. If you've still Let's got one. Let's face of them. it, Google Stadia. <laughs> like, ah, oh, here's a, here's the no. release games. It's Skyrim, is it? Yeah, it's Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, it's Skyrim. Uh, that wouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> oh, oh, look at this Turbo Graphics Mini. What's it got on it? Oh, it's got Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> Skyrim on all the things. Look nice. at this Mini Skyrim. Oh, you've got your own Mini handheld Skyrim that you can Skyrim in Skyrim. Skyrimception. Then there's the. Uh... Amazon Alexa edition. Yeah. <laughs> I won't. I won't say the key word because I have one in my room. It's always listening. Uh, yeah, I never, I never wanted one of those, but we got given it as a Christmas present, and we we don't have anything that links up to it, so it just essentially becomes okay. a glorified music player. But half the time when you say, you know, yeah. play this song, it just goes, oh, no, that's not available to you. Get Amazon Music. <laughs> or I can just put YouTube on my Chromecast on my TV and listen to any song I want all the time forever. Google is your mm. <clears throat> Indeed. I wouldn't get Google Home either. <laughs> I don't like the idea of them listening. No, I don't. Like constantly recording no. me. Horrible. I don't like being recorded. No. Huh? 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 Uh. Hmm? Hello, hmm? hello. Uh, That's why I do this. I don't like people listening to me. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Oh. Ow. Oh. Truths hurt. Cut. Ow. <laughs> Truths hurt. Oh. Close to the bone. Ow. My feelings. Ouch. Noses. You don't count as people. No, it's fine. I'm barely. I'm more of a homunculus. <laughs> mm. That's a good word. I yeah. like that word. And on that. Magical note, we shall call an yes. end to the gaming podcast. Cease the podcast. Oh, Game over. We went so far it became E4. Wait, no, that's another thing entirely. Oh, hang on. Uh, oh, no. Well, uh, uh, bye from the, the gaming side. See goodbye, you, gamer. See you next week for something probably not gaming. <laughs> see you. Probably not. Who knows? Hmm. That's my Cuba impression. I don't I don't know if that's good or not. You do you not know Cuba? Only from Only from Wreck It Ralph. That was pretty good actually. That was that one was alright. Yeah. That was that was of course Pac Man being devoured by a ghosty. What's mm. Can you tell this is gonna be the ending un- sting? Unraveling. <laughs> yeah. This is it, isn't it? Yeah. Just you doing sound effects from retro yeah. video games. You got any more up your up your sleeve? Dung.
That's when Sonic gets. Like, that's the doom. That's when he dies, and that's the game over. Dies. Tune. Oh. Uh, what else is there? No rings left. Mm. Mm. Yahoo! That's uh, that's, uh. That's, that's Yoshi. Is that? <sighs> Wahoo! Oh. Hello. Yeah, that... <laughs> Hello. Your your, your uh, wahoo was pretty good. Thank you. I'm yeah. thinking about taking over from uh, what's his face when he dies. Let's face it, he's pretty pretty old. It's it's soon. It must so I'm be. working on it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's a me. Getting the preparation. <laughs> it's a me. A stereotype. <laughs> As a uh, an end. I, yeah, well, uh, get away from her, you bitch. So, there's that. Um, I thought this was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>